When night falls and light does fade, when hope has seen its last, see the dark beyond the void that knows no shape nor cast. Do not fear the coming dark, hold faith to love and clan, for the coming of the darkness will bring the wrath of man. I listened to the poem sung softly by a mother to her child, as we milled around to watch the slowly circling starships as they came into land. The slavers had come. Our time was ending. The poem was from an older time when our planet had been in peril from a rogue asteroid cluster. Our scientists had tracked the planet killers and our fate appeared to be sealed until they arrived. The humans. Technology so advanced that our dabbling in medicine and industry appeared as finger painting to a master artist. Their beautiful ships of black dimensional matter swept aside the asteroids like a child sweeping aside toy blocks. Their payment? Friendship was all that they asked. They despised the loss of diverse sentient life in the cosmos, and fought it at every turn. Our two species became inseparable for a while, as they came and went from our planet until, to our shame, in our greed we saw more. They would not let us have their technology, such as their amazing ships of dimensional matter that travelled to the known galaxies in seconds, and could only be seen when they intruded into normal space, in any shape the humans wished. The humans told us that you cannot truly appreciate the view until you have climbed the mountain yourself. When we became angry and demanded they give us the technology, or leave, they left. In time we came to understand that although they had appeared to give us nothing, our society had progressed in leaps and bounds during those bright years, as our people were subtly nudged in certain directions, to uncover wonders we would have not realised or taken countless years to discover. Our friends had done that for us. Given us the wisdom and time to understand our own creations, and we had turned them away. On our own, we now had to face the invaders. A scout ship from the SLA had arrived a month before, seen our limited ability to protect ourselves, and declared our planet a conquest of the SLA Empire. Our race would be repatriated into the Empire to serve the SLA race, and our planet mined for its wealth. The pleading of our head of state was met with derision, and he was killed with a handheld plasma gun as an example to us all. We had no escape. We were not a warlike people and still our travel was confined to our own star system as we struggled with the concept of faster than light travel. As the lead ship grounded, an impressive figure of a reptilian Slar officer descended and approached our group. I am Deros, the commander of the Slar battle group above your planet, he bellowed. I claim you for the Slar Empire. No. That single word froze the breath of everyone present. Deros was enraged. He turned, as did we all, to the source of the descent. A lone human dressed in black stood not ten paces away. No one had seen him arrive. You dare! bellowed Deros, as he pulled a plasma gun from his leg pouch and discharged it at the human. The plasma discharge hit the human in the chest and... nothing. The human had not fallen nor even moved to protect itself. Capture it! Deros demanded in his impotent rage. Four of his guard charged the human, and as they hit the black-clad man, whatever touched him disappeared. Arms, legs, torsos, were sheared off as if by the finest knife blade, leaving the remaining body parts to flop around on the ground like fish out of water, or moan if a mouse still remained. As Deros and his remaining men stood stunned, another officer of the Slar ran down the boarding ramp of the landing craft of Deros. Commander! An unknown ship described as a black spear has appeared one light second from the bridge of the command ship Starkiller, the officer gasped out. Deros looked at the human. Fire a barrage at it. Destroy it, he commanded. The officer spoke into his wrist communicator, and high above, ten missiles were launched from the command ship's support vessels at the black sphere. They struck with pinpoint accuracy, and... nothing. Do you consent to leave, and not return? the human politely asked. We will rain death on this planet for my ships and destroy it before I will give it up, snarled Deros. That is unfortunate, the human replied sadly. The officer beside Deros raised his communicator to his earsod, as if trying to understand the gavel coming out of the unit. Sir, our fleet has disappeared. The last report we see was that the black ship enlarged until it swallowed our ships one at a time, that when it shrank back our ships were gone. I can no longer get a signal from our battle group. Where are my ships? demanded Deros. They are where you left them. However, their molecular nature has been converted, the human replied. Into what? Appelled Deros asked. Gas, was the reply, 
as a dark shape fell from above, covering Delos, his men, and his grandest ships like a huge black blanket, before reforming into a black sphere not much larger than the human. The Slar had disappeared. Slowly, I approached the human. After what we did, why? I muttered. For the first time, the human smiled. Friends may fight, friends may argue, but a true friend is never far away. We wait for you, friend. The view from the mountain is exceptional. Come and see it with us, he replied, before he and his ship just disappeared.